Welcome to the Spirit Centered Business Podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now, here is your host, Berlin Newby. Well, hello there. Welcome to Spirit Centered Business. This is part two with the next agers. And uh, off camera, we were having some great conversation. But essentially, what we want to talk about is how to get this message into the hands of the people who need it. Like the world is hurting, right? And um, Daniel, you mentioned something that about it being some people are focused on ourself and our growth, and some people are focused outward, and I don't think either one is wrong. And I think that we definitely go through seasons. I definitely have times when everything that is coming into me is meant to go out. And then there's times when everything that's coming into me is meant for me. Gotta deal with my stuff, gotta deal with me, gotta, you know what I mean? So I think that there's different seasons for that. But Derek, I really want you to say what you just said off camera. <laughs> I can remember it. Yeah. No, just talking about just the first session that we did was so good. And everybody, because we haven't we haven't talked in a while. A lot of us haven't talked and to see what God's been doing in our hearts and in a form of encounter, in a form of revelation and those things. And hearing everybody's uh, different facet of that revelation, it's all a piece of the same revelation of what God is doing in the earth right now. But he's given us different pieces of it in the way that I said that that I know is because the same things God was speaking to me in a, a radical encounter that changed me. It's a staple encounter in my life. Everyone, Martin, Daniel, Christopher, Catherine, you, Berlin, Michael, everyone has been articulating things that God has said, uh, words that I haven't, haven't been, really been a huge part of my vocabulary. I'm hearing it come through everyone else, and I'm sure the feeling is mutual, right? Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely. And I, you know, one thing, and just to piggyback on what Christopher was saying earlier, I think Daniel as well, is that, you know, for a long time in my life, I was always trying to get rid of myself, right? Because that mm -hmm. was, that's what I understood as dying to myself and whatever, right? That's it, what the church it, taught you, right? Exactly, right? And <laughs> it was, you know, I need to get rid of, I mean, my prayer was that I would literally see the face of God so that everything in me would just die, right? Yeah. And I wept and wept and I wanted that. And I had no clue what I was talking about, but that's what I wanted, <laughs> right? But what I'm finding now is that that's not actually what the father wants, that he already died. And so it's me to discover who he has already made me to be. And I think for, for many of us and even many of the listeners, we're so distraught and actually depressed because we feel like we're so wretched and we have to, we can't even in, interact with God because of that wretchedness, right? And so the truth of the matter is he wants, he's already inside of us. And so for some of us, and this is the season I've been on, you know, more recently is a very, very deep internally season that is, it's a self-discovery. And I think whoever said it was, it was brilliant. You know, it's like, when Jesus tells the father, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And then it's like that same rhetoric back to me. If I've seen myself, I've seen the father. I mean, it's like, oh, that's almost offensive. You know, it's yeah. like, that was Catherine. She's that. brilliant. Yes. <laughs> but, it, but it was awesome. And that, and that is, it, it, it spoke to exactly where the fathers had me recently. And I think as you said, Berlin, we go in seasons of external push, seasons of internal push, and they're both good and they're both necessary. And I think it's, you know, as, as we've said on here, all of us are in, in actually a very similar season, but so different in how that's expressed or internalized. And I think that's the beauty of it. And I'm, man, I mean, like Derek's saying, I'm, I'm learning new stuff here, which is why I love these conversations, because it stretches me, it grows me as well. And I, and I just, I want to just encourage all of us, but even in anybody that's listening is that it doesn't matter where you are, where you are or are not, it's, it's all the same spirit. And we're all, as we come into a, a higher level of consciousness, then we encounter that and we see more of the father and less of our own self. And what I mean by that is our own junk, but we process through. It's not like we just drop it off. You know, it's not like we just handed it Jesus's feet and run off. It's like, no, let's let's process through this 
and work together as one. And that's the intimacy of the relationship versus that, you know, here you go. Here's all my junk and I'm, I'm out of here. It's not, no, we, we work as, as, as lovers together working through that versus just the, you know, that drop and run. And so I think for me, that's an important aspect for all of us that we are going to be in different, you know, inward, outward seasons, and it's all good. But to your, to your point, Berlin, I think we can get stuck in one mode or another thinking that is the only way. And I think it's important to recognize it may be that season. It may, it may not be. And so we don't have to stay stuck in a, in a particular mode the entire time. Yeah, you know, I, I've recently just came back around, and this is not the first time I've thought about this. It's like in those seasons where you're feeling a little dry and you're just like, I'm not really hearing as much as I uh, want to or seeing in the spirit as much as I want to. It's all about like this is a football <laughs> coming all the way back to, you know, sitting in Yahweh's heart or just having that intimacy. And I'm wondering if sometimes in those seasons we don't get to Christopher's point um, more self-focused than we ought to only because we're not having the experience that we want to have. Mm. And I, and I, and I just want to challenge, I want to challenge myself, first of all, that in those seasons where I'm feeling like I need daddy, I need daddy, where can I help others? Because I'll probably get out of the, I need daddy faster if I can focus on others, right? That is so interesting. I love that question. I was just talking to a client today who was saying, you know what, I, I hit a, a, a wall a year ago where I used to pray all the time. I used to love reading the Bible and, and I used to do that. And she said, and now for the past year, I haven't been able to really pray consistently. I haven't been able to read the Bible consistently. How do I get back to that place? <laughs> and you know what I told her? I said, so um, why are you thinking that you wanna go back to that place? <laughs> why are you judging the season you're in as bad and the last mm -hmm. season as good, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. The only reason that you think this is bad that I'm not like waking up going, oh, where's the Bible? I've got to read the Bible is because we're putting a judgment on that. I said, there are things you can get out of a season when you can't read the Bible as much and you can't pray as much that you cannot get <laughs> from seasons where that's all you want to do. Right. So instead, because I know for me, I used to every time I head into a new phase, I'm like, wait, why isn't this like the phase before? And I'll want to judge it as better or worse. And why can't it look like it? What? And but sometimes it's really just judgment that we're putting on it instead of just saying, like, I'm in a different place than I used to be. And what can I get from this place? that I couldn't get from before. And I don't know when this phase is going to be over and I'm going to wake up and just want to devour the scriptures again. So what can I get now? And I think a lot of times it's just removing judgment from things and, and seeing the phase we're in as worse than or better than. And I think that is, um, I think when we can get to that point, it's a major breakthrough. It's not just this incremental growth. It's a major uh, growth and I think a lot, I think that's part of this raising the consciousness of the world. I think a lot of people are about to be on a major breakthrough in that area. Mm, I awesome. love that. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. really good stuff. And that's a, it's a trust issue too. It's the Psalms 25. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord. Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Mm. And I, I remember one time I felt, I asked the Lord, I'm not learning enough. Uh, you know, I'm not growing enough. And he said, what's that verse say again? I was quoting that verse, meditating on it. It said, bless the men that fear of the Lord. Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. So who chooses the way that you're being taught, who, that you're being tutored? You do? Ouch. And it was like, it's that trust issue that if you know you're fearing the Lord, your consciousness is on him, there's different developments and stages of the womb. So when you're in the chosek, the darkness of God, that womb, that's your womb of development, that you're trusting the different stages of the development of a fetus, of a, of a new uh, cre of part of your nature, of your kinos nature being ready to manifest. 
there's stages of development. You trust, you just trust him that you're being tutored the way that you're in the season and you alter your consciousness, shift it to that trust and say, Hey, I'm when it's time for this to emerge and me to get it, I'm going to get it because I trust you that you are teaching me. You do lead and guide me into all truth. You do sh show me you, there is no unbelief. There is no doubt. You are teaching me and I trust you. Mm. So good. Great prayer. That's awesome. Yeah. Michael, were you going to say something? <laughs> Always, you know, I'm <laughs> um, <laughs> just getting drunk listening to you guys and thinking about what's worked in the past. And just, I've been kind of seeking for what is, what is God's will really for my life? Like, how do I please him? Cause part of, part of me, it's, you know, the Romans, like I do that, which I hate and man, I'm just a miserable wretch sinner, you know, but then Romans eight twenty eight, you know, he's going to cause everything to work together for good for those who love him. And all those scriptures that we've memorized. And then these new teachings like Martin and friends have really brought out is like this acceptance of self and realizing that you you matter. And it's not like a, some kind of 12 steps program. It's like really big. It's like, you're right there in the throne room with God, helping him direct things. And I guess one of the things that came to mind was just um, out of intimacy with the Lord comes, not just like, Oh, we're getting more souls. We're getting a revival. It's not that at all. It's although it is some of it, it's you're, you're going to automatically find souls that just drop in your lap that are ripe. Or people that are on the journey that you're just planting little seeds. You, you notice that they're, you know, the Lord's after them and you're just going to push them a little bit further and <laughs> bye bye. And then the Lord will bring somebody else to win them. But a lot of it is the fruits of the spirit and the virtues, I think, is um, like, how much peace do I walk in right now? How much love do I have and compassion? As Derek was saying, like Jesus, the key was he felt love and compassion and, and then the keys of blessing and activating that whatever it was maybe he used the power of cloning the fish and the bread i don't know how it works and this is so good to keep this dialogue going you know i want to invite you guys anybody in town to, to just you know one day we'll have a physical you know joe rogan around the table meeting and uh, minus the marijuana uh we'll just oh the man spirit. No, come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah no sorry you know uh, it's illegal here um <laughs> That's why. That's my excuse for all you guys. Um, but just walk in those fruits to get out of the lack of um, everything and the extremities of being overly disciplined to memorize scripture all day, every day, or go out on a witnessing schedule or whatever. I mean, it's just this going to be this daily spirit guiding. And then we're going to see him do miracles that are so great and so big. I think that... Um, there's super simple things that we can do. Like my friend who just got awakened recently, he had a vision of all these people filled with light, but there was mud from sin from the world on them. And the, the key was to open your mouth and speak, you know, and that's what a lot of us feel like doing when we go, just open your mouth and I will fill it. Just speak in tongues, go, go live sometimes and, and journal and God will do these. He, then the mud just melted off. And these people were, their skin was light. This is a friend of mine just had this revelation. Their skin was their whole body was just the, the light of God. It's already in you. It's just, and you don't even have to focus on whatever problems you have. You just start speaking the truth and love and receiving Jesus, and letting his light pour out through you. And all this stuff just burned away. And there was this huge army. So again, I think the, the practical marketing side of all this, you guys can get TikTok and start making little 10 second blurbs and and just go comment on on Christians on there that like just got into the game. They need people with experience to just be there, be a presence for them. So I started a TikTok called Spirit Wars and immediately started getting hundreds of views per little blabber. And and I'm just putting my foot in my mouth the whole time. But you know, I would advise all of you, and I will shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That's good. That's awesome, man. Is anybody else on TikTok? Just curious. I'm on TikTok. Oh, of course you would be, Derek. <laughs> I'm a rapper, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of your peeps are there, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very cool. And how long have you been on it? 
Uh, since COVID started, it got. Uh, I, I, I joke jokingly say it TikTok got us through COVID. You know, and, no, uh, wow. it de- yeah, it's yeah. definitely. It, it was a, at the time. It was an app that we could use to get a quick laugh. You know, you could still do that as long as the algorithm served you in that way. But once you start clicking on political videos and weird stuff, it'll keep serving that to you. But oh. like when everything was heavy with COVID and it was all over the news and it's all we heard, like, I, I need to laugh. I need to lighten the load a little bit. And so we just me and my family stayed on TikTok all the time, just laughing, showing each other funny cat videos and stuff. <laughs> OK. All right. Very good. You know, when- if you write Christian TikTok, you'll find a huge, huge population awesome yeah that's some good stuff on there for sure you know one thing and i and i i love you know everybody on here i mean if you look at the diversity within who each of us are reaching it's it really is quite amazing right there isn't none of us are the same you know and and i love that some some have bigger audiences than others but it's beautiful and i and i think that that is such an important piece you know as we talk about you know, how do we get the message out? Like, like Basham was talking about, it's, it's wherever you are, right? It's what, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, you know, and whether it's a, a big call that, you know, we, we see and celebrate with Derek and, and what he's been able to do through hard work, tenacity, right? It doesn't just come overnight as, as he, he's clear about that, but that's the vision that he has and the Lord's given him and it's fantastic. And we celebrate that. We celebrate with everyone else who is is doing different stuff, whether it's a large, small stage or no stage, right? It's 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 beautiful because you still influence whoever it is. And I think I think it may have been Michael that was saying as really, I think it's it's the encounter, right? So when when I encounter people, how do they leave when they leave from hanging out with me or just even talking you know, with me for a brief moment? Do they feel loved? Do they feel encouraged? Is it, you know, when, when you walk away, does it, you know, do you vibrate? I mean, I had a, an encounter with, um, oh, what's his name? Daniel Love is, is, is him on, on oh. Facebook now. Mm-hmm. And dude, he didn't live that far from me. And I ended, up, I ended up calling the guy, right? And I, after the conversation with this dude, I shook for two hours. Like I just, I, the presence of God was so strong. Like I, I just, I shook. And I blue flame. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't stop. I couldn't, but it was, it was wonderful. Right. It wasn't like a, a violent shaking. It was just like, I shivered just with the love in the presence of God. It, it stretched me beyond my comfort zone on how he was speaking about oneness, but it was like, I felt it. Right. I didn't just learn something. I felt it and it, and it shook me in such a good way. And I, and I feel like as is each of us have that as we come into that consciousness and greater understanding of love from the father that's what changes people right it's not the guilt fear shame condemnation those are unfortunately they they are effective motivators right uh for behavior but they're terrible motivators long term and i think as we're shifting into love it's it's for me it's the question how do i feel when i'm coming off of this, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm loving what I'm hearing and seeing it and experiencing. And so how do, how do others feel the same when, when they leave with those conversations? And I, I want them to feel the, um, so one of the, one of the things that the father's been teaching me is how do I, I expand its consciousness, but it's, it's expanding my field right? So each of us emit a field, a frequency, whatever you want to call it, you know, uh, we emit that. And so how do I broadcast that a little bit wider and broader and emit the the love of the father so that I don't even have to talk to you, you're going to be encouraged, right? And that's where he's, he's kind of moving with me. And that, I think that operates through every, every technology source, but also in business and everything that we do, how do we do that? And for me, that's kind of been the season is, is how do I, how do I expand that field uh, of the love of the father? That's awesome. I was practicing that in the store the other day. It felt a little heavy and kind of hustly bustly. And I'm like, I don't like that. So I'm just going to whoosh my piece out. (laughs) Expand that field. You know, yeah. it's funny. We we were in a Doctor O 
meeting here in Mobile, uh, Daniel. And uh, uh, Dr. O mentioned something about about that, and my mind went straight 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 to uh, the prayer of Jabez of uh, uh, enlarge my borders, Lord, mm. enlarge my territory. And I'm like, oh, he's talking about the to uh, toroidal field of our yes. in our sphere of influence he's talking about yeah. our heart space and he's talking about the same aura that hit the shadow as the bible says that peter had that started healing people mm -hmm. just by being around him because he had this such huge love and i feel it all over me as we're talking about it but it's so good man to to because it's not what goes into the mouth but what comes out of the man's heart so it comes out of our heart and it expands and it comes back to you you give an account for every word that you say not when you die but when that field comes back to gather up everything that's supposed to happen and it comes back and we just expand it with peace, I'm love, on. joy, blessings. And so people are blessed by just simply knowing you. People are blessed by simply being around you, being a friend, giving you a cup of water, the scripture says. Yeah. They receive a blessing Good. because they gave you a cup of water. A stranger, because we've done it under Christ. Guys, this is deep. So good. <laughs> but it's so practical too, right? Yeah. And you know, you know what I, for me, my mentality as the warrior, right, was that Berlin is, is, you just said, when I would be in a grocery store and I'd feel the heaviness, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to whoop some tail, you know, I'm going, I'm going to crush it, you know, and now it's like the father is shifting me to say, no, I'm going to change, I'm going to change the vibration in the, in mm -hmm. the atmosphere to love, because mm -hmm. that's, that's far more powerful. Now there's times of warfare, but it's, for me, it's, 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 generating that that field of love mm -hmm. greater and greater and greater because i cannot in my from what he's showing me is like i can't use the same violence and tactics and expect different results than what i'm seeing mm -hmm. whatever whatever method i use to gain victory is how i have to maintain it and so if it's warfare guess what i'm stuck in warfare but if it's love and eminence of love then i'm stuck in love I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'd rather be stuck in love all yeah. day, right? And so it's, and, and I don't have it all worked out. I'm still, he's still teaching me and showing me how that, how that works, but it's, it's so different. Uh, but, but wow, man, it, so, so good. <laughs> I was thinking about this earlier because we're called the next agers and, and there's a lot of things that go into the next age. And one of the things that you just mentioned is the old age, the church age, the past age was warfare. But now we're in an age of position. Yeah. Who are we? You know, and so when we can whoosh out our peace and our love instead of our rocks and fear first you know <laughs> fighting i think it's totally different yes i love how you guys put it i was I was watching one of those um like superhero movies not not a real popular one like marvel but it was one where every main character had like the superhero power and and it was all warfare powers right it was like i can you know kill you with my claws or i can kill you this other way or this third way or whatever and i'm watching this movie and god just speaks to my spirit and he said how would you like to have a superhero power? And I'm like, well, fun. He's like, how would you like your superhero power to be to hit people with bliss? Mm. Right. And can you imagine that you're going and instead of being like, I'm going to knock you out, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this warfare against you to walk by someone and they get so caught up in bliss. They just drop every argument they had against you or against, oh, you know, whoever they were fighting or whatever the situation was. And I think that's, that's what you guys are talking about, <laughs> but in the context of like God calling it, it's a superhero power. And it is actually probably more powerful than all the old ways of, of killing people. <laughs> I agree. Derek. So good. Uh, Derek, you kind of brought it up a little bit earlier when you were talking about the diamond before, what, back when the, uh, back when we were turned Passes. off and yeah, the facets of the diamond, you know, uh, and I and I really believe that that Yahweh gave me this this vision years ago, and it has been core to a lot of the ways that I see things and the way that I teach, and that has to do with what I call the diamond of Yahweh, and how that each one of us, when when He showed me this diamond, He told me that I was one of those facets, and then through as as I began to meditate on it, I realized, oh wait, if I'm one, then each one of us are a, a facet on that diamond of Yahweh. The only difference was this diamond was a little different in that it had the light, it had light from the very center of it. And that light was the light of Yahweh. 
And so it wasn't reflecting, reflecting and refracting light from the outside. It was reflecting and refracting it from the inside of the light. And, and, and as I was looking at it, I began to realize how beautiful each one of those facets work together. So I got to thinking, now wait, how does, how does this happen? How does reflection and refraction happen? Well, the white light of Yahweh hits a facet and then it refracts and it breaks up into the seven colors of the rainbow or the, if you will go there, the seven spirits of the Lord. But what causes the true beauty of the diamond in that it bounces off of the other facets to create the twinkle, to create that, that fiery, beautiful dance of, of color that you see. In other words, when you look at the diamond as a whole, the beauty of it is expressed because each facet works together. Each facet is not only reflecting its own light, but also the light and the refraction of the lights from others that are nearby as well. And even from the other side of the of the diamond, because I even went to that point, I said, well, Father, what about the, that facet on the other side of the diamond? Because the way he was having me look at it was, if I'm looking to him in the middle of the diamond, then I'm going to have one perspective. The people close to me are going to have a very similar perspective, but a little bit different, because they got a little different of a, of a, a perspective to, to the way they're seeing him. But what about the person on the opposite side? See, they're going to have a completely opposite perspective as me. And he said this, he said, turn around and look out of just your facet. And this kind of goes a little bit into what Catherine was talking about earlier. And as I did, the one thing that disappeared was the beauty of the rest of the diamond. All I could see was my own perspective and outside of my own window nothing else. I could see nothing else. So I couldn't see a connectedness. It was almost as if I was by myself all alone, even though I, I, I could sense the presence of Yahweh, I had made a choice to turn around. And it was, it was just what I was seeing in front of my own face. He said, now turn back around. So I did. And as I did, it, it hit me the moment that I turned back around and looked at the father, I realized that as each one of us are looking in, looking to that center of the diamond, looking into the face of our Father. We will always find the commonality or the coming together, or if you will, like you were talking about earlier with the toroidal, uh, the aspect of the toroidal field that's around us. It always came back to the singularity. It always came back to that one point in the center that brought everything back together, and we could see how each one of us worked together as a whole. See, that's the problem with the, the, that we were taught from the old age. We were taught from the old age is, is that I have, to, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to, I have to be able to, but I look at these, you know, I have to be able to do this and do that, but I look at other people and they're further along than I am and I begin to compare myself, you know, I'm looking out of only my own facet when I'm doing that. But mm. as, I'm, as I'm looking at him, I begin to see, now, wait a minute. Your part plays in with my part, but let me make sure that I do my part right. Let me make sure that I do the, the very unique, specific thing that the Father has called me to do, and let's see how this works together as a whole. Let's see how the words that you've given me, Father, will connect with the words that Catherine and Martin and Chris and Michael and, and Berlin and Derek, you all come together, and we bring about that focus of really the beauty of who we are all together as one, that echad that, that you were talking about, Martin, that place of us operating as one. So just well, another way of seeing it. Awesome. Cloud of witnesses. <laughs> What's can, that? I give a good oh, can I give a good meditation for that? Yep. Okay, you know, in Colossians 3, it says, if you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection, your mind on things above, not on things of the earth, for your dead in your life. It's here with Christ and God. Things, devarim, dev, from devar, words, and not, not in heaven. He doesn't say heaven. He says it above, because the heaven can't contain all the words and consciousness of Yahweh. So each one of you, our words and consciousness of Yahweh. So if we go into the first let, uh, verse, is uh, Bereshit Baro Elohim et Hashamayim Ba'et Ha'aret Bereshit. Six letters, Beit, Resh, Aleph, Yod, Tav, uh, six letters, uh, Dagash in the Beit, the dot in the Beit, six letters, six days. 
six days of creation, which are represent development of a man. Well, I know we focus on creation. It is, but it's also the development of all of us in one and in, in all of us. Mm. So the dot represents the dagash. The dot represent the bait represents the seventh day Shabbat Sabbath. Yeshua, who is our Sabbath, Yeshua the Sabbath, the dot. The Via Gion, the rabbi, I'm probably butchering his name, said if you meditate on that dot, all of Torah is in that dot. And if you meditate in that dot, you will assimilate all of Torah. Now, if you can meditate on that dot and see it become big, see yourself, you lose, you begin to lose yourself and see his word. Then you begin to see his desire and his desire for other things. Then you see that dot expand and, and link with other dots, concentric circles. And you begin to connect and then you begin to feel the desire of Yahweh for every dimension, gate, realm, frequency, vibration, universe, earth, parallel earth, alternate earth, whatever. You begin to see Yahweh's desire for that, and you begin to connect with that, with the words. I know people think you've got to go out and spend all this money on meditation. Thing. It's right in the Torah, if you ju- or in the Word, if you can just focus on these letters and that dot or the vowels. See yourself, exp- and then you'll expand yourself. You'll Not only because you'll connect with others and you'll see others, you won't see yourself, but at the same time, Yourself is expanding. Awesome. Good. Mm. Awesome. Um, Michael, there was something you said earlier that I just wanted to, oh, now I forgot. Hmm. It was about the chainsaw, just through me, the chainsaw, just, you know. <laughs> Sharpening your saw. That's it. We're sharpening our saw. <laughs> and not just yeah. a two-edged sword, a chainsaw. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it goes around and around. It comes back. It's an infinite, right? It's the terrestrial field. <laughs> the swords are so last age. It's chainsaw. I know, right? Hey, I, will, I will say this. I, j- I just pointed this out. I just looked it up. So the word Torah. A piece of a piece of that word, right? When we say it only means this, but a piece of the word Torah means to flow as a river. Torah, torodio, oh, wow. Torah field. Oh. It's a flow, wow. a constant flow, really deep. All things are connected. Oh, good. It's wow. really good. Wow. And not well, that, dead. Go ahead. That teaching, I, I think Daniel and Christopher were both sharing is like, um, the cloud of witnesses, the unity, I can't use all those really cool high tech words that they had, but I saw like those crystals, like those uh, aspects of the cloud of witnesses where we're all different people with different pasts and different ideals in some ways, but mostly the same spirit is going through us and we're complimenting each other. And when everybody sees like, wait a second, they're not even competing with each other. Like if Derek goes on coast to coast, it's like we're all going on coast to coast, baby. You know, like it's really exciting. And I'm excited for him. And uh, that's how I feel. Like we're, we're able to basically be the living New Jerusalem on the planet right now. Because that's the next stage is the millennium. And you look at like uses of time travel and that, that idea. Like, well, why would we need those new weapons? Well, I had a friend just email me and, and sent a voice message like 10 minutes long. And it was just this vivid dream of going to the millennium and going into somebody's house and just what it was like and, and it, how different it was. And the realization that, wait, this is like a different era that is yet to come. And it was so peaceful and it was so interesting in the art and the details. And I can't get into it, but I think there's that we need that vision right now, especially as, you know, steak costs 25 bucks, you know, not to eat. I've got to eat an impossible burger for dinner and you're just going through this difficult time. But you think about reaching into the future and bringing it into today as Ian Clayton used to teach. I think it was Ian, but I got to catch up on Ian. Um, That's this, this vision of unity. Like we all have a different thing, but we're speaking the same. And I've had dreams recently about like quantum leaping into other people and helping them perform certain things that 
or even just kind of get their head screwed on straight. Like, do not make that decision. That's going to screw up your life. Do this. And then I came back to myself and I was like, I was so a part of their experience, like that old show quantum leap. But then I came back into myself and I was like, this is freaking awesome, dude. Like this is, this makes sense. Okay. Like there's like the, the, the Bible, the miracles in the Bible are so creative and so various that I just want to keep expanding and seeing what else is God going to do. And, um, and I'm not uh, some lone guru guy too. I mean, I'm totally depending on others too, for so many things. I'd like to thank all the people that have been super generous on, on Patreon as well, Berlin and Martin, and you guys are just way too nice. Um, but I think that's, that's where we're going. It's, it's going to be this economy of like lifting each other up, going forward, all kinds of stuff is going to happen. And I'm so excited. Yeah, that's true. And that's kind of where we started this segment was like, how do we get this message out there? How do we lift each other up and come together and just let those petty little things that our separators fall to the wayside because the enemy is so much more organized, you know, and they don't concern themselves with all of the petty stuff that we do. Why is that, you guys? Because they That's a deep question. We're <laughs> sorry, <Soros> funds. <laughs> anyway, well, um, I just had one last thought that came to me earlier. Um, we were talking about kind of the raising the consciousness. And I think we did this in segment one, although it could have been earlier in this segment, but we were talking about raising the consciousness and raising our own consciousness. But I love, do you you guys know about the, the theory or the concept of the hundredth monkey? Do, are you familiar with that? Yeah, Catherine. Let, okay, just for the audience who doesn't know that, they did a study of these monkeys on an island that um, one of the younger ones, only a, like a two-year-old or something, a younger monkey started washing her sweet potatoes in the river because they loved the sweet potatoes, but they didn't like the sand that was all over them. And she started washing them in the river. Pretty soon, all of her peers were washing them before they were eating them. But only a few of the adults actually did it. But then there came a point when they call it the hundredth monkey was washed their potato before they ate it. And then suddenly, even on other disparate islands, the monkeys were washing their potatoes before they ate them. And it didn't matter what the age group was, everybody did it. And so I think that the the consciousness level of raising of the awakening or the, the revelatory downloads that people are getting, or just even realizing um, that you've been living in the matrix, something like that. I think it's coming. Well, I know it's coming, but what can we do to like push Like, I feel we're at 95. Come on, you guys. Come on, let's get 96. (laughs) You know, (laughs) what can we we get that consciousness raised so that we have that tipping point? And that vibration is, is to the point where it just goes over the world and like every knee will bow, right? Mm. I think, I think you answered your own question in the, in the story. (laughs) I mean, I really do, Brolin. You answered it because it just takes one. It just takes one to do something a little bit different, one to see something a little bit differently, and then allowing others to see how that works together. I think the key, uh, another key to that is then not comparing one another as to what we do, but realizing that each one of us has a part to play and each one of us are important. But I think the answer is right there. It's just, it's just that we do it. We make the choice to, to go ahead and do it no matter what. That one 100th monkey, I love that, did it and nobody else did it. They they but they did it every time they ate, and they kept yeah. doing it because they knew the benefits. And then it started to change the rest. Consistency. Yeah, consistency. Yeah, yeah and I so I've same as you. Sometimes I I get discouraged thinking, oh my gosh, the world has so many problems and there's so many people. How can we go and heal each person? But then when I see the potential in everybody, the clients I meet with, you know I you look at them in the spirit and it's like, oh my gosh, you're so like, there's all this spiritual authority and this amazing, amazing things. And then sometimes afterwards they'll say, okay, so like what's going on right now in your life? 
I'm in this drug addiction, this alcohol addiction, right? And, and that's, so what, what the potential for each of us has is unbelievable. And it really can just take focused effort on a few people. I can't personally reach everyone in the world, but you focus on certain people and you unlock them and then they unlock the people next to them. And it really, like you said, does not take very long before um, be, we are so powerful. I almost feel like more effort, if we could go deeper into ourselves and into just a small group of people, kind of like Jesus's model, maybe, right? Instead of trying to, yeah, the big, the big crowds, but who we really developed was a small group of people. If we could each, you know, really pour into a small group, that really, um, we're so, each of us is so powerful. We could yeah. go change half the planet if we really were truly flowing in everything that we really are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so good. And I think what, what you hit on Catherine, was, I think is really important because you said here, the clients that you're seeing are powerful. They're, I mean, they're doing amazing stuff, but yet on, on another hand, their lives are absolute disaster, right? There's addiction. This, and, and I think, it, I think the shift for me is that it actually, it's not about my own personal purity. Well, I think that's a byproduct of, of experiencing love. That isn't what gets me accepted. Right. And, and I think that's important. We see that in the disciples. I mean, the disciples were, were a mess, you know, most of the biblical characters were a mess, but yet God worked through them despite what we would see on the outside is, Oh, they're disqualified. Every single mm -hmm. one of them in our current church standards would probably de be disqualified. And so I think that's part of it is that Whoa. You don't have to be qualified first before you go do things. Now, right. the father is probably going to, as you encounter love, he's you're going to be doing the more difficult internal work, which is important, and don't avoid that. But it's you don't have to clean up first and then come to the father. It's come oh. to the father in intimacy, and oh. in the process, he will he will begin working through pain and wounds. And I think it's it's kind of like Daniel said earlier, it's the knowledge of good and evil or comparison. It's that that's part of the journey is he's going to work through those hurts and wounds. It's not that I'm good or evil. It's that I'm, I've got hurts and wounds I haven't, I have no clue how to deal with until I've come in with the father and doing the inner work because we're taught to stuff it and leave it at Jesus's feet, which doesn't do jack in reality for the internal work, right? And so it sounds good but it didn't do anything other than stuff it deeper. And so I think for me, that's the piece of it is it doesn't matter where you are or came from or are or not. It, it doesn't matter. It's the same spirit, right? We're all one in him. Come on. There is no separation. And I think that's a, a key piece of this. And that goes to whether a huge platform, no platform, it's, mm. it is the hundredth monkey, you know? I mean, I, I think that's a great deal. It's the it tipping point in marketing terms. It's the tipping point. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we, where we move forward. It's not, I, I, I don't even pray for, you know, the, the big revivals anymore because uh, well, those aren't, you are the big revival. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Good job. Get Derek. Yeah. Revival exactly. is internal. And yeah. then it just spills over onto everyone else. And I think that's a key, key piece for us. No. So good. Michael, did you just cut yourself? Guide. I'm just popping in and saying amen, but I just oh. want to say too, like, this is a, a culture that is being built. And with Gil mm. and Karen and you, Berlin, and, and all of our separate gigs that we're doing and pushing, it's not even just about the internet, obviously. We want to see this actualized. But remember back before nobody used Zoom, but Gil and friends were all using it and yeah. then pretty soon the whole world was using it. It was like that long-term vision. You didn't give up. You're still doing it. But then you see these signs like, Hey, this is actually, we're actually doing something, you know, before everybody else was doing it. Hey, look at that. And, and, uh, I've been in cults. I mean, my grandfather, Don Basham was part of a big one with Derek Prince back in the day. And then I was in a, another one, but I've seen the joy of fellowship of a unification of, of mind and purpose. And the beauty of what we're doing is nobody's in charge of it. Like there's nobody that's like telling Derek, you know, you better not have that 
psychic witch alien lady on your show or I'm not your friend anymore. Can't do it. We all have our autonomy and liberty. And that's what I think America was trying to be. But it's we're seeing the limitations of that with our own government. But we're becoming the future America almost. You know, that's I call it the spirit force. People are asking me, where do I sign up? I'm like, just go find your local angelic recruiting station and he will sign you up. And I'm not in charge of it. I'm just one of the, you know, one of the cheerleaders for it. But I see this as a culture that is being built and the tipping point. I think we've seen a lot already. I think we're going to see a lot more. So go to the fringe and the edge of like what you know and jump off and then you'll be the next, you know, uh, sorry, hillbilly with the tractor down the road. I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> you'll be the next, next ager, you know, the next like futuristic fringe, whatever it is that God's going to do next. I think that's what we can, we can look to. Good. Yeah. yeah, I think the tipping point wasn't the hundredth monkey. It was the first monkey because the first monkey that made the different choice. Well, that was so the real tripping. There's, tipping there, point. there's a, a deep teaching in the video I want to send you. They say it's not the first person because the first it's, monkey is the crazy one with the idea. It's the second one who said, you know what? To join follow this person. That's I said, so oh, awesome. There you go. I like yep. that. That's good. And yeah, also, I want to send you the video of Berlin. I'm sure you know it then, right? I, that's awesome yeah and also just think about this if it were humans would i have gotten offended that my parents or upper that, that they wouldn't didn't trust me enough to do it mm. and that they are still eating their potatoes with sand on them how dare you you're so stupid you know <laughs> wouldn't that just be the story me? of my life <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Christopher, you want to weigh in? Oh, I was just saying you go back. I knew the letter Koof was here. Koof means monkey. Oh, it sense. does. So the letter yeah. the letter Koof was here, and MBE mm -hmm. imitators of Christ. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm I'm also seeing. I knew the letter Koof was here because he told me to come on. So when you start to interact with the letters, and you know y'all, and y'all talked about all all y'all talked about the aspect of the letter Koof of consciousness and shifting consciousness so but i you know i was just going to see i was seeing a cube and a door open in the spirit and i'm seeing a television uh media uh thing being birthed for you uh braylon braylon is that right berlin. Braylon? Mm -hmm. so at berlin i'm seeing you start to go into media and i'm seeing the tv uh if it's okay i'm seeing a cube over your head with the door opening it and so, several of you are going to start to step into a, a broader media aspect so um i received um, that and actually i am in our new studio space we have we our our camera crew is going to be here we've got a three camera setup it's it's amazing so yeah god is doing some amazing things so you're absolutely right on so that i just wanted to share that that's not just for you that's for some of the other people and they're they're about y'all are about to enter in new dimensions of media mm. that are be incredible and uh mm. the letter koof is co-laboring with you guys to take you in because koof also means i have a needle how do you in spell koof k-u-f K koof 19th okay. letter which is also the grammatia of hava uh eve which is which is birthing in a sense because 19th ordinal letter which is the grammatia of eve but it's 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 so, so much birthing so much of your shadow of the womb. Many of you are about to come out of the womb of the Chosek of Yahweh into the uh, and shift your womb into the earth to birth much. And I don't know. I'm just, mm. It's just awesome what I'm seeing. That's good. Awesome. Well, I definitely want to extend that out to the audience as well because you're not. It's not about us. It's it's really about whoever so whosoever will, right? So. Yeah. You know, we just went through quantum capacity challenge, which is expanding the capacity for to receive and the structure to support and have, hold the responsibility of what God wants to give you. So what Christopher is talking about, it's a whosoever will. If you'll do the work for God to, to create the vessel, prepare the vessel for God to pour the oil in, he's ready to pour the oil. Heaven doesn't run out of oil. Earth runs out of prepared vessels. So I would, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching. <laughs> that's good oh, come on get it that's Preach. good come on so, so let me let me take that one step further then berlin if there if there's always a steady flow of vessels there will always remain a steady flow of oil Ooh, good 
Mm. Yep. Oil us, Lord. <laughs> and what is the oil? The oil is to light the lamps, to keep the lamps lit. And what is the light? The light is the revelation of Christ. To go deeper into the revelation is to continually have oil in our lamps. So good. So good. And oh, my gosh. Well, I am going to just let's just do one more round robin on the question, um, because this is the it'll this December 30th. So new year is coming. Any last thoughts regarding either getting rid of the old year or bringing in the new year? Just as we were sitting here, this whole segment actually, it was this segment. So it's somebody, it's people watching this segment. I was just feeling um, a little bit of, I guess what the audience is gonna be feeling. And I think there's a little bit of anxiety with some people and maybe financial stuff or, business uncertainty and um and a real desire for breakthrough and shift and maybe um so for some people it's going to feel more like a desire it's going to feel like if i don't get this i don't know what's going to happen almost a desperation and i feel like there's a real um power in that actually in that feeling of like i'm feeling desperate i'm feeling like i need something because that's a movement, that feeling, any kind of time we have a strong feeling, it's actually moving, energy's moving, mm -hmm. there's a movement there. You can grab onto that and harness it and, and take it and turn it and twist it into what you want. So I would just say, as we head into the new year, if you're feeling any kind of emotional thing and we might say, oh, this is a bad emotion, I'm feeling really desperate, I need a breakthrough take that feeling and grab hold of it and say, this is going to submit to me and to my desires and to what, however you want to do it, to what I'm declaring next year is going to be, or to what God's declaring and to what's written on my scroll or what my angel has told me or, or however, however it's been revealed to you, that feeling of desperation is not a negative thing. It doesn't mean it's not that the breakthrough you want isn't going to happen. It could be the very tool that you need to get there. Mm -hmm. or it could be a different path to get there than you've taken in the past. So I am just, I'm saying this and it is happening for some people that you are grabbing onto that depression, <laughs> onto that desperation, onto that relationship that just exploded and that energy that like, oh my God, that's awful. No, it's not, it's, we're grabbing onto it and we're, and we're making it submit to us to take us and we're saying, use this God, take this and use it to move me into that next thing. And it's going to be a more incredible breakthrough than some people, than you would ever have thought. And I'm going to say one last thing, because I just feel, um, as you step into the new year, I'm kind of feeling like God wants us to put our expectations, like shove them away. Because a lot of times when we have expectations, like this year's going to go like this, or my business is going to go like this, or God said this to me. So therefore it's going to happen. Like it's happened for everybody else that God has said this to. When we have expectations, they tend to um, shape and set limits and parameters around what we manifest and what happens. And I think if we um, can put our expectations aside, what we step into is limitless possibilities and a limited, unlimited, limitless space, unlimited space where we can manifest anything from anything, from even that place of heartbreak and desperation, anything can manifest. So put aside your expectations, use whatever you have before you, and, and you'll manifest unbelievable things. <laughs> oh, good. That's your ticket, right? You know, when you said that, I, I just wanted to throw one word in there. Sorry, I thought I was on mute. I'm pouring a glass of protein shake here. This is so exciting. Got to get ready. So there's a word called liminal space. And as I was thinking about going into heaven and these visions and what we're speaking of in the future and, we, and the uncertainty, and yet God has this plan, there's this new trending word, liminal, L-I-M-I-N-A-L. And it's kind of a fad word, but it means like, you know, like the background on a Lego set, there'll be like this background um, scenery. And there's something kind of vague about it but it, it grabs you but it's meant to just present something else and it, this limitlessness that we're going into it has definition it's just that we kind of tend to think 
well, God's going to get me my monster truck that I ordered from Amazon, but he has something totally different. So I love what you just said. And I would w- add one more thing is the, is that he would give us the desire for him so, and, and remove all the religiousness of that, like actually craving his presence and his, his, uh, his hand in our life. Come on. It's so good. Amen. And if Anyone you're going to be quiet like that, I'm going to add one no. more thing. Then, Go for uh, it. <laughs> <other people. laughs> I am seeing daily miracles manifest. Like I can't, I don't have time here to tell, but just physical manifestations after going on different t- chats and messages with people. And all we do is we just, we just extol and, and type out prayers of, adoration and love and draw, you know, draw us closer to you, Lord, show us your ways, Lord. And they, they've been going on for the last month or two, but we're seeing then out of that, there's these just almost automatic things, like just a laundry list of, of powerful miracles that like he is doing something here, guys. So I want to thank Christopher for that prophecy as well. Yeah, you know, I, it, this kind of to me, this kind of brings us right back to the very beginning uh, during the the show that we did for the twenty third, uh, and brings us back to our original conversation because there's been something that that the Lord spoke to me earlier on, and I've been meditating on it since then, and that's that's the adage that we all know: as above, so below, right? And we look at that place of of where who we are and 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 who He is in us, you know, but. I, and I've asked this question before to some of my classes. I've said this, I said, you know, I used to say when I was a kid that there was a God-shaped hole inside of me that only he could fill. Well, if I believe in as above, so below, then could I ask the same question? Father, is there a man-shaped hole inside of you that only I can fill? And it begins to, to bring together that place of a, of a thinking of, wait a minute, number one, there's no separation. Number two, my heart is to be in that place of intimacy with you. And number three, it connects us together so that everything that I do is, is just what, as Yeshua said, I only do what I see the Father do here on the earth. So I think a lot of, of what this next year is going to bring is going to be a change in thinking. I know Martin and, and Berlin, you and Derek and I were talking earlier, and we were talking about how some things that the Father has been showing us had rattled us. And sometimes they were very simple things, but the way to articulate them was difficult because we realized the depth of where he was taking it. There was, there was so much more there than just the simple explanation. And, and the truth is, is that it's, it's, there's a bit of changing in our thinking that's been going on because he's bringing us to that place of really that of trust and confidence, you know, and I remember that scripture that I've, I've heard since I was a child, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Don't lean to the way that you always saw things before. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge, in all of your ways, know that he is set before and you're walking in this path together with, with him and he will direct your path. He will let you take that next step on that bridge that I talked about. He will let you know that that next step is going to be safe. And even if a wind knocks you off, you're gonna learn how to fly and land right back down on that bridge. So I'm thankful that there's been a, a, a change in thinking, if you will, like uh, Christopher was talking about earlier, that change in consciousness. And so that's what I'm excited about this year. This, the, the if you will, to use some Hebrew here, <laughs> the yachad, yachad is the Hebrew word for together. So Yahweh is bringing us yachad together to bring us into the place of echad, one, and we're operating from that place as one. That's so awesome, Daniel. And it's funny because I had written down earlier for the name of the show, Encounters of Connection. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you I, go. I'm, I'm seeing a shift in consciousness in the Ecclesia too. And just to keep it simple, the rabbis say, even the verse in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat becomes, and the, and you, uh, the tree of knowledge and of evil, it shifts to, and of evil, you shall not eat. Wow. Mm. 
That's good. When they, I think it's an added vav or something, but the rabbi saying that in the Mashiach and when Christ, so when Christ, like the serpent on the pole is lifted up, Christ compares himself to the serpent on the pole. When you see him, when you see him, when you see the kingdom, then you shift your consciousness, then the notion, then it's not about, uh, it's not about good and evil. It's a, then you only eat of the good and the original intent and of evil you don't eat. Mm, that's good Uh, i mean jesus didn't eat of that he he didn't speak in those terms he didn't speak in those absolutes they said you're you are a good teacher you're good hold on no 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 i'm neutral only god is good no come on don't don't call me good i'm not good only only the father is good and so when we look at the the prostitute or the man with the withered hand hey that's a prostitute she's bad jesus looks and says no that's a daughter that's my daughter. What do you mean? She, I don't see what you guys see. I got to give you my consciousness so that you can see people the way that I see, see them. And that's um, light that comes to your understanding and the way that you perceive the world. We look at the same thing, but we see two different things. We, we look and see a man with a withered hand. Jesus saw potential. I can see sure. that hand. I can see him going back to work, providing for his family. I can see him fulfilling his dreams and calling, not here on the corner begging, but I see the infinite potential in Come each on. and every person. And we got to have that, con- that, that consciousness of Christ to move forward, to see the things that are not as though they are. As man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart and he sees that infinite potential. And that's been my prayer. That's been the revelation as we continue to spend time in his presence, as we continue to study and we continue to lay ourselves upon his altar and uh, go through that gestation period of, of, of incubation in the secret place. And the deeds that are done in the darkness will be revealed unto the light. And God, we pray that they are the beautiful things that we're doing in secret. And the inner work that we're doing in, in, in the inner dialogue that we all have where we wrestle with God and we hold on until we're blessed. And we don't choose the animalistic nature. We choose mm-hmm. love. We don't choose the way of Esau. We choose the way of Jacob to rationalize. So, you know, what? I'm going to choose love. I'm going to choose Christ. I'm going to choose this day who I'm going to serve. And so we have to be that. We have to be a vision that the people are blind. The people can't see. Jesus is healing the blind people. And he worked with them and he showed them. and He's taught them. And he prayed for them the first time. And I, I kind of see men as trees. Hold on. Let me work with you a little bit. There's some more that you got to get. And let me work with you so that your eyes may be restored and you'll be able to see the things not as though you are, but the way that they are created in something beautiful. So stepping out of duality into that oneness, which everybody is an emanation of God. And we've been talking about this, this this whole talk. Yeah. So good. Thanks, Derek. Thanks, Derek. (laughs) Well, Martin, anything else? (laughs) Yeah, I think just to piggyback actually on on Catherine, and I, I think this is something the Father's been showing me is to like in in regards to the new year, right? Looking back, and I like to use my imagination. It's like close your eyes and look back, and almost personify the year twenty twenty one, and show gratitude, even if it's been a hell of a year, the worst year of your life. Look back and release love to to the year and to the events and to speak love and to release love. And I was just talking with somebody the other day, even if you don't, even if your heart's not into it, just do it. And, and it was, it was cool because I saw it like three times. It's like, I saw this individual just like, kind of like, thank you, you know, (laughs) and the first time. And it's like, there was a shift, just a slight shift. And then she closed her eyes and saw and personified this and spoke it again and it had more into it and it's like it shifted again and then the third time her heart was in it and it just broke and it wasn't warfare it was actually embracing just like what you're saying uh, Catherine it's like instead of fighting against all this stuff it's actually bringing in close and love and and gratitude and I know all of you guys have been speaking about this but I think I, I would just encourage each each of us, and I'm I'm learning to do this myself, is to look back into that and truly personify it. Don't ignore the emotion of it, but embrace it and actually speak life and love, forgiveness and release into that, and then turn towards 2022 
and do the same thing. Come so on. you're speaking it into your future and into your past and into your present. And it's the gratitude and it's the, the expression of love. It's, it's really learning to expand your field of love into every aspect, past, present, and future. That's time travel, you know, because <laughs> I can affect all of that. Right. And so that would be just my, that's what I'm, I'm learning to do. And, and I would, I would just encourage all of us to, to do that. And however the father draws you to and, and shows you how to do that. So that's my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, again, you guys, this has just been so good. Thank you so much for taking your time to come and have a great conversation. I really appreciate all of you. And um, I just wish all of the best for all of my next stager buzz and the audience and everybody. Thank you so much audience for your support. I, I really appreciate it. We've been able to do some things with the production because of your financial support. And I, I love that. And I love you for that. And I love that you're helping getting the message going out there. And um, always just contact me. Uh, go to the website, spiritcenterbusiness.com if you would like to get in touch with me. I appreciate that. And also, speaking of New Year, you guys can get the replay of the planning, the Fresh Year Planning Workshop that I did on December 17th. If you haven't um, partaken of that yet, it might be good because we definitely break off 2021 and we pull things down from heaven for 2022. And like Catherine said, it's not about expecting something, but it's setting your expectation that God is amazing and he has amazing things for you. All right, you guys, until next yeah. time, stay spirit centered. Peace out. Thank you again, next agers. I love you all. Happy new year. Thank you. Happy new, Happy new year to you. How do you say that in, in Hebrew, you Hebrew people? Chris, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Okay, I don't know. Shana, Shana Tova, I think. Good year. Okay. Yeah, thank there you, you. go. <laughs> right. Put me on the spot. I don't know. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Spirit Centered Business with Berlin Newby. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The next stage of doing business by being spirit centered is coming together in collaboration, working with spiritual principles and knowing our destiny. Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.